So this is a real nice day today. A beautiful day with sunshine. I'm so surprised to see the sky clear. We still have a lot of snow out there. It did not melt. It's cold, but it's beautiful. I'm going to go out walking and I'm going to drive out of here because the streets are icy. <laughs> I can drive over where I can have my boots on and walk in some snow. So, what you guys been doing? Uh, I was up till late last night watching a couple of videos that were, caught my interest so much I couldn't stop. So, uh, one of the channels is called Mind Unveiled, and he has some really awesome videos. I haven't looked at, I've only looked at like three of them, but the latest one is quite historical, showing some really interesting things to, to think about regarding the history that's been presented to us and all the old buildings and just a whole bunch of stuff. It's five hours long, so I had to divide it up over a two-day time. And I thought, my God, well, this this is a long video. It was, but I just couldn't, I couldn't put it down. It was just so, so uh, intriguing. So then uh, the next video that I watched last night was on the same channel uh, regarding orphanages and as insane asylums and all these old buildings that they were in. And just, just tons and tons of them all over the place. Why? Where'd they get all these orphans? Well, he, t he discusses it quite a bit, and it's just extremely interesting. My father was an orphan, so-called. They took him from his parents when he was little, about three years old. And he stayed in an orphanage in South Carolina called the Carolina Children's Home until he was 12. When my grandpa remarried and, and my wonderful grandma went and got him out of there. Well, I was trying to find, you know, even pictures of the joint. It's real hard to find. They've changed the name of it. They've made the Carolina Children's Home into a foundation and and it's just a whole, a whole, you know, rigmarole of bullshit, really. Um, but quite interesting. And you know those orphan trains. Have you heard of heard about that at all? Um, that's quite amazing that that happened. Tons and tons of orphans distributed around. I know this was going on <clears throat> quite a bit in Italy also, and I'm sure, you know, many other countries and places, but it was just mind-blowing. Orphanages. It appears to be that the reset was done with a bunch of children from uh, that they, you know, confiscated from families and repopulated some of these cities with. So therefore, our ancestry and who we came from is hidden. Knowledge is hidden. A whole bunch of stuff is hidden from us. Anyway, so I'm kind of on a on a hunt to find out some of these things, and I got into that video last night, and it was just amazing to me. And if you'll see that title of it is orphanages and insane asylums, that's another big thing that that, that insane asylum stuff. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah, that's another. Uh, Horrendous thing to start digging into. Um, but then I went to Blissful Oasis. Now this is this is a, a guy that's 
onto some good stuff. And he was telling a lot of nice foods and herbs and things and health things that we can do to help ourselves uh, during these times that are, are very difficult for everyone. One thing I'll just mention that he said that I, that I thought was real cool is he said he carries a jar of honey with him. Now I have these little small jars of Manuka honey that I found in the grocery store and it's really delicious and very nourishing stuff. So I think that's a cool idea. Carry a little jar of honey with you. Stick it in your purse, in your backpack, in your car. And then if you get in a position where you're hungry, when you're out and about, and you don't want to stop for fast food or junk food or and you don't have a lunch you know, with you, which a lot of times, most times, we don't have such of a thing. Uh, you can just grab that out, teaspoon of honey, and it'll last you quite a while. You'll feel good for a while. So you can get back home and have a meal. One thing that I carry is a little small jar, little tiny round uh, jar of bee pollen in my purse. And I, if I get hungry before I get back home, I can pop some of that in. And I always take a bottle of water, good water, with me. So just some important things that are very interesting. He speaks about all kinds of stuff like um, frankincense, those little tears, those little balls. And I've had the essential oil. I have some here now, but I never had, had the tears. So I looked on Amazon. They're not expensive, and they are natural from a tree. And, and you can chew them like bubble gum, he said. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Pop one of those in. They're so nourishing. Just amazing. Um, I've been working on some beads. I made this one bracelet, the purple one. And uh, I bought this spool of stretchy elastic to make bracelets with and the problem I'm having is the knot when you tie the knot when you get all done the knot is thick and it shows I don't want I don't want a knot showing I've used a little super glue on this one and that 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 tied it up and made it stay in place but if you have any ideas or any tips uh, I know a lot of you make crafts and jewelry and stuff. I'd appreciate if you have a little tip you could give me of what to do about that. Um, inspire. Yeah, I, I just love that sign. And it makes me think of breathing, for one thing. That uh, our friend over on Blissful Oasis discussed that too, how important our posture for correct breathing is and how important breathing is for alkalinizing our whole body. And the oxygen is just, just so important. And if you can get out also and walk uh, in an area where there's plenty of ozone, that's great too. Those plants and those trees, hug a tree in the forest. It's kind of hard to get in the forest here right now, but um, many of you can still get in the forest and walk during the winter. And it's just so rejuvenating and restoring uh, to the mind and the body. The air is wonderful with the trees and the plants all make for us, purify for us. But yeah, inspire. Um, I was thinking the other day about that saying that's, uh, that I heard a while back, that some people are so 
heavenly minded that they're of no earthly value. And I thought, that not that the truth? You ever spoke to these religious fanatics that, you know, you can't say anything without them saying all their little sayings and um, things that they parrot uh, that pop religion at you. But also I thought, well, you know, religiousness is not a church or a creed or a belief system or anything. It's right in here. We can be so damn religious. To get that out of us is the quest. We can leave the church. We can leave the Bible, all that stuff, kick it in the dust. But it's the religious mindset that we have to struggle with to delete from us. Get rid of that. <laughs> so we can be so spiritually minded that we're of no earthly value to our brothers and sisters, our families, our friends. So yeah, I love my spiritual friends. And I love the spiritual part of our lives uh, more than anything. But we also have to be careful not to be uh, still thinking with a religious mindset. That's a big, deep subject, and I don't plan to, to give all the answers to that. That's for sure. I'm just discovering it in myself how I've been very religious-minded. And what, what you do with that is you project it onto other people. This is the way you should think. This is what you should do. This is what I want you to do. I'm not happy if you're not doing what I want you to do. Those are all uh, patterns of thinking, deeply ingrained, from the years and years of programming and mind control that we're coming out of. So, happy days coming on out of that matrix and figuring out who we really are and what we're here for and how we can enjoy life, enjoy our journey here. And how we can be good uh, input into the lives of those uh, that we have around us. I better shut this off. It's getting kind of lengthy.